Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Brittany Pacheco, still filling in for Todd Duplantis. And today we are joined by two very special guests from various departments here at HCC. First, I'd like to welcome Melissa Bruton. I'm sure I mispronounced it and I apologize in doing so, but she is the Program Director for Surgical Technology at HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning. No, you pronounced it very good. Oh, thank you. I'm going to try. Um, we're also joined by another guest, but we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, but for everyone who is curious about our guest, uh, he is the Dean for Liberal Arts, Humanities and Education at the Academic Center of Excellence, Dr. Theodore Ted Handley. And as I've already stated, he is having some technical difficulties, but we'll work those out. That way we can hear uh, Dr. Handley and what he has to say about the Academic Center of Excellence. But before we really get into it, everyone, I want to thank you all for joining us this morning on Up to the Minute. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget about our YouTube channel, subscribe, Hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest from HCC. And last but certainly not least, we want to grow our audience and we need your help by sharing this podcast so that we can share all this great information to the masses. <clears throat> Getting right into it, uh, we're going to uh, begin our interview with Melissa, once again, who is the program director for surgical technology at HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. So Melissa, um, Coleman, of course, is greatly affected by the online learning because of the necessity of your clinicals and labs being hands on. How is that going for you and your students so far? We are doing very well at um, changing our modality of instruction. And um, the part that it's really affected is our lab where if you, in surgery, you're not six feet away from anybody. So um, we, are, we are doing education by videos or by uh, showing the students certain things, but um, being in lab is definitely a different avenue when we are operating on patients and you're not six feet away from them. Obviously, it's uh, I know a lot of students, especially, of course, uh, who are in the health sciences, um, as we stated, need to have those hands on experiences. And I know uh, clinicals have kind of been a, a question for some students who concern naturally for uh, their own health and safety as well um, as those around them. So um, we, we talked about this before um, the show began about how clinicals are going and how are you all uh, working with students who have those concerns about going into clinicals during this pandemic? We have several um, clinical sites that have opened us opened up to us again. So we have placed our students in clinical starting yesterday. And um, for the majority, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't say business as usual, but we have, we wear our masks in surgery anyway. So it's not, um, such a concern about not being able to breathe behind the mask as it is health reasons, but we wear gowns, gloves, and things like uh, those type of articles. And um, students that are uncomfortable with going to clinical, we've been very compassionate because this is a new experience for everybody coming into this pandemic. When we are going into the hospital where the sick people are, instead of staying home, um, behind our closed doors, we're actually putting ourselves out there. So the students have to be aware that that is going to be their future, that they are going to be running into the fire as firemen would say, rather than sitting at home or doing something where you didn't have contact with people. And we've been compassionate and, and uh, worked with our students to make sure they are aware. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, commenting on that. Um, but let's get back to surgical technology as a whole. Um, what are the various degrees offered within your program? We have uh, currently we have the certificate program. We also have a sterile processing program, which is an occupational skills award. Uh, it's a two semester program. So it's a, uh, I'd say an introductory to surgical tech, but it's more of a choice to make to decide to come to that program. And then we have the surgical technology uh, allied health associate degree, but surgical technology is going to become its own associate degree starting uh, fall of 2021. So we're looking forward to changing 
into that transition. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And and what is uh, accelerated alternative delivery? And if you can just talk on that for a little bit. Yes, that is a um, program that is designed for those that are on the job training, um, people that started in many years ago and worked in the hospital as an on, on the job trained surgical technologist. They're not able to sit for certification without going through a formal education. So they come to HCC and gain that knowledge and are able to sit for that certification exam. Because in the state of Texas, you have to be certified. All right, I can hear <laughs> you have to be certified to work in um, surgery. Okay. Uh, Melissa, I'm going to interrupt our interview just real quick, and I'm going to try to unmute our other guest, Dr. Ted Hanley. Dr. Hanley, can you unmute yourself on, on your mic? It's in the lower left-hand corner. <laughs> I know we were able to, uh, you, you just came in, sir. Um, let's try to unmute everyone. Here we go. Dr. Hanley, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you so much for for joining us. Um, we're right in the in the middle of our interview with Melissa from uh, HCC Coleman College. She's part of our surgical technology program. Uh, once we wrap up our interview with her, I will be sure to uh, say hello to you once again, sir, and we'll start our interview with you. Sorry to interrupt. See you shortly. No, no, not a problem at all. We're so glad that you're able to join us today. Uh, we'll be right with you soon. Thank you. Melissa, thank you so much for uh, you know working with us as we're trying to you know you know shift through technical difficulties here on you know in this new norm for us. Um, <laughs> getting back to uh, what you were just uh, talking about, <clears throat> you also offer uh, certif uh, certificates for a speedier entry into the workforce. Correct. Right. Uh, we have the um, sterile processing program, which is a two semester program and that program um, has had a lot of growth in the last uh, two years. So we're super excited about that. And we have hospitals that are wanting those students, wanting to hire them and uh, usually hiring all of them during that, uh, after they're finished and uh, ready to hire them in uh, Memorial Hermann TMC and Houston Methodist TMC and um, Memorial Hermann, uh, Katie, and we have a, a lot of different clinical sites. And as soon as they graduate, they're usually uh, snapped up into those jobs. If, you know, as long as they do what you know, you're supposed to do as a student, those jobs are very much uh, available to the students. Absolutely. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, Melissa, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe uh, you all had a student success story come out of your program. Um, with what we were just discussing, uh, it, it helped this young lady really get into the workforce immediately, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we did. We had uh, a student that was hired at Memorial Hermann, and I believe in the trauma uh, department, and she was on the trauma team. I also ran into a um, anesthesiologist over at one of the hospitals one time, and she said she was a graduate of the surgical technology program many, many, many years ago. And I thought that was very uh, exciting. That's amazing. I, I, <clears throat> I've run into a couple of people, I myself just for personal uh, appointments. Uh, I just so happened to wear my HCC jacket. Uh, when I was being x-rayed, I had to visit an orthopedic. Um, I was being x-rayed and the technician noticed my jacket and he said, oh, he goes, I, I did my my certification at HCC and that's how I was able to get this job. So it's it's always great to, to run into someone who you may or may not know, but HCC has impacted their life greatly and they're in this field of work that um, that they probably wouldn't have been without the, the, the help of, of instructors such as yourself and, and the programs that we offer. Uh, Melissa, what are some of the, statistics, the statistics, if I can say that word, <laughs> on employment of your graduates upon completion, and does Coleman's location in the medical center help? It definitely helps being right there in the heart of the Texas Medical Center. Uh, it is the world-renowned Texas Medical Center, so the jobs are um, definitely available in, in, it, in the close proximity that we have to all of the medical hospitals that are there. 
um, we're very blessed to have that and be able to have our students that closely related to those hospitals and then to be able to go into them so the employers can see them while they're in action and learning and um, make those hiring decisions uh, and approach the students or if this they usually prefer the student to ask them and then they will uh, grasp that student at that time and if i'm not if, and correct me if i'm wrong but if i'm not mistaken hcc is the only community college that is inside the Texas Medical Center. You are absolutely correct. And we are very blessed to have that. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Melissa, one last question. What is your vision of the future of your program post COVID? And, and do you think you will keep some of the same instruction that you all have had to put into place now or return to your formats of from before? We will continue our online education. We. But prior to COVID, we actually did hybrid education anyway. So converting to the online learning was not a big challenge uh, for us so much as other areas like math that had the bigger struggles. But we we used the online canvas, um, but not to the extent that we're using it now. So I imagine we'll still do a lot. I really enjoy the videos that we can do. Uh, the class lectures where you can um, answer the questions. And, you know, when you're in a classroom, you may not get that student. They may not have the um, security to ask the questions, but for some reason in an online environment, they feel more freer to ask those questions. And we are able to answer them. Um, and I feel that's a good thing. Uh, we will be hopefully going back to campus in October if, um, everything lines up and works out okay and we can do that lab instruction in that time we will be practicing uh, practicing social distancing and wearing our masks the entire time and cleaning up between students and uh, we're very excited for that to be able to go back to some of the instruction that way melissa burton from the Surgical Technology Program at HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. Thank you so much for chatting with me this morning on Up to the Minute. And we have had a comment saying that your program is a great program. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We, we think so. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you once again for joining us and uh, have a great, great day. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to our other guest, uh, Dr. Theodore Ted Hanley. Let's see if we can get you unmuted. Perfect. I am muted? You are, sir. How are you this morning? I am well, thank you. It's very nice of you to invite me. Of Pre course. Thank you so much for joining us. I know we were experiencing some technical difficulties, uh, but we did introduce you at the top of the show, Dr. Hanley, and you are the Dean of the Liberal Arts, Humanities, and Education for the Academic Center of Excellence. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Indeed. All right. Um, and, and that area covers a broad spectrum of subjects. And so can you tell us exactly what are the liberal arts for those who may not know what liberal arts is? Really, at uh, HCC, we use the term just a little bit differently than a number of institutions do. When we speak about uh, liberal arts, we're talking about the disciplines of history, uh, philosophy, uh, humanities, world languages, which in Houston means primarily Spanish, uh, secondarily French, but we also have uh, have uh, growth in the area of the Asian languages, uh, Japanese, uh, Chinese, Korean, and our education department, which really has three different wings to it. We have the uh, child development program, uh, the teacher preparation program, and we have the uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, kinesiology, which for those who don't know, kinesiology is a study of body movement. And we pair it with exercise science, which is the uh, study of fitness. And we offer a multidisciplinary degree there. But that's a little narrower definition than a lot of schools use. You know, a lot of schools when we talk about liberal arts, they're also talking about English and, and uh, public speaking and fine and performing arts. <clears throat> Sometimes, um, social and behavioral sciences, sometimes even mathematics and physical science. And the whole concept of the uh, several seven liberal arts uh, evolves from uh, the ancient world, really from the Greeks, 
um, um, who, who studied uh, grammar, rhetoric, and logic, and then at a higher level, uh, arithmetic, astronomy, uh, music, and geometry, the seven liberal arts, the seven bodies of known knowledge in the day, and of course, the queen of all study theology. Well, that's where it comes from, and that's who we are. I remember taking uh, basic humanities uh, it, during my undergrad at the University of Houston Clear Lake, and uh, I had a really great instructor, Dr. Silvermans, who uh, just made learning humanities, uh, basic text one, actually, that was the course, um, just really fun and interesting. And he would just say, oh, the humanities and, you know, just be dramatic right. about it. But um, but Dr. Hanley, why wh for people who question the, the liberal arts, why study liberal arts? An interesting question. It's one that we hear more today than we ever used to when I was starting out in this business a number of years ago. When I was in the classroom teaching, I used to ask my students this question. So when you finish next year and you are in an employer's office and it's a competitive job market. So why is that employer going to choose you? Is it because you're smart? Probably not because everyone that you are going to compete against is smart. Is it because that you are uh, graduated from, from a great college and have a great degree? Probably not because everybody you compete against will have graduated from a great college with a great degree. So what employers talk about that they're looking for are uh, the soft skills. I like to call them the enduring skills. They'll stay with you all your life. They're the skills that will get you your first job. They're the skills that will keep you employed. Uh, they're the skills that will help you to get promoted. And um, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about critical thinking and the ability to think independently. The ability to stand in front of an audience and speak persuasively. The ability to write clearly, uh, effectively, and, uh, and efficiently. It's the, uh, the ability to work as a team. Uh, nobody teaches these any better than the liberal arts does. And you know, that's just the start of what a liberal arts background gives you. Uh, liberal arts gives you the philosophical framework um, by which to understand the, the great issues of the day. It gives you the historical context to understand and participate in, in, the, in the discussions uh, of, our, of our time. It gives you an understanding of self and the human condition. But who are we? Why are we here? What is our relationship and our obligation to our neighbors, to the environment, to God, as we understand that? These are the great gifts of a liberal arts education, and I can't imagine going out and facing the world every day without them. I couldn't agree more with you about, especially about the critical thinking and being able Thank to you. stand in front of be it a, a you know 500 people in a room and be persuasive or just uh, have a, a very analytical conversation with with your colleague um and one of the great things about studying liberal arts here at hcc because we are a two-year institution is that being a part of an academic program many of these courses will transfer to a university so uh, do any of the programs offer workforce uh, certificates making our students able to uh, just go right into the work, uh, workforce uh, they do, and uh, the one that's most obvious, of course, is uh, education. So we have a track in child development for, for individuals who want to teach in a Head Start or want to run their own daycare center or, or want to work in child care. Uh, then we have the uh, teacher education uh, for uh, individuals who want to go into to the classroom and teach. And there are some entry points at the two-year level, but most go on for the four-year degree you know, and become full-fledged teachers. But there are also two other entry, entry points that are really interesting. One of them is the level one certificate in infants and toddlers. And they're qualified to participate in this program. You don't necessarily need to be college ready. You have to be, have the heavy interest and go through a year's worth of training. But at the end of a year, you can get the certificate and. Uh, be eligible to work in, in the child care setting. And then we have uh, um, the teacher's aid certificate. It's a, an 18 month program. Uh, it's 48 hours. Uh, candidates need to be college ready. 
um, but for the it's particularly uh, suitable for fact for parents who are already working in the schools with the teacher assisting and if they want to make a career out of it and, uh, and a job get paid uh, this certificate's 18 months 48 hours and it's a great entry point absolutely so uh, dr hanley what are some of the challenges uh you all have been facing in getting ready to open for this semester which uh did begin yesterday all right well you know the the college has done a lot of really great things in general um all, all faculty and staff and students have to take a little training course before they can get on campus and when they uh, you're going to have to answer some questions about their health. They're going to have to have the temperature taken, or the social distance, or have to wear masks, and, and more, and much more. But at the department level, uh, it, it's just a little, uh, a little different focus. Last spring, after the spring break in March, all courses, even those who were face to face, suddenly went online. And uh, it, was a, it was a real shift for some faculty. So what we did at that point was to match up uh, faculty with mentors to, to help them uh, develop the skills they need in a hurry. And of course, over the summer, faculty had the opportunity to, to tune up what they're doing and be more ready to go online this fall. So for the departments for this fall, the, the real challenge is make sure everybody is up to speed and comfortable teaching online because everybody's online at the moment. And it's not just a matter of taking what you were doing in March and dumping it online. It's a different medium, different challenges, different opportunities to faculty have to use a different strategy. So again, we're taking senior faculty who've been online uh, and they're giving seminars, training for faculty who are, who are newer to the medium um, to help them make the most of the online experience. I think for other departments, the, the real challenge is helping faculty to get comfortable with the notion of coming back on campus and working with others face to face. I mean, we've been at home since March, and now we're now we're in a classroom, um, many of us. And uh, so it's one thing to create a safe environment, and it's another thing for people to understand that the environment is safe and be comfortable participating in it. And that I think has been the second challenge. And the third is really just a challenge of communication. Communication was easy when our colleagues were just down the hall or we're seeing our students every Tuesday and Thursday face to face. And the tools now are terrific, um, but, but a little different. And some people aren't as comfortable with them. If you look, for example, at our, uh, our world languages uh, department, uh, we have new courses. Uh, in Asian languages, Chinese, Korean, students are not native HCC students. They're coming to us from four-year colleges in the area, completing degree requirements there. So reaching out and maintaining contact with them is a little bit more complicated than it is reaching your own native faculty and staff. So those have probably been the three largest challenges at the department level. Absolutely. Dr. Hanley, thank you so much for joining us. Um, once again, you know, as, as you've uh, illustrated that this is a change for everyone. We're, we're all having to adapt uh, to, you know, to this new learning environment and uh, we're doing the best that we can both, uh, not both, but students, faculty, staff, administration, everyone, of course, and we appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your morning to chat with us about the liberal arts and I mean, I, I, I fully support, uh, you know, studying the liberal arts because obviously I was an arts major. So this is a it's 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 a nice, well-rounded education, if you will. So, Dr. Hanley, uh, it, Dean it, of Liberal Arts it, and Humanities and Education, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right. And uh, <clears throat> moving on to announcements. Sorry, I just had to, you know move my script a little bit. So we are promoting a new initiative from HCC in regards to outdoor Wi-Fi zones. So HCC campus buildings are still closed, but students are given options to support their online learning experience with such uh, parking lot resources as outdoor Wi-Fi zones to connect to the internet from their cars. So 
current HCC students, you can connect to the HCC private network and prospective HCC students, you can connect to the HCC public network. However, you will not be able to access restrooms in the building because as previously stated, our buildings are still closed and you will not have access to outlets to charge devices. So make sure you come prepared, uh, make sure you have your laptop, whatever device you're working on, it's completely charged and ready to go. For more information about this outdoor Wi-Fi zone, head over to hccs.edu slash outdoor Wi-Fi. For students who need that one-stop quick guide to help you to know what to expect and where to get help during the semester, we have an online services toolkit for you. Answers are there from technology to textbooks to tutoring and much, much more. Head over to hccs.edu slash online dash toolkit. We've talked a, a lot about Black History Breakfast and the Black History Committee is presenting its first virtual scholarship breakfast showcase with music, games, and door prizes. That's happening tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. You can register with the link that we have in this post, and you can also donate with a, a different link that we will post in this broadcast. So if you're interested in either participating or donating, be sure to uh, look up those URLs in this Facebook Live post. And I've said it once, I'll say it a million times, the HCC Foundation scholarship application is about to close. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity for tuition assistance. This is open to both international and domestic students. So if you are interested in applying for a scholarship, head over to hccsfoundation.org slash scholarships. The deadline to apply is next Monday, August 31st. So be sure you do not wait to the last minute to apply because it could change your life just like that. It did for me. And I hope it will do that for many of our students who are watching. We also have our student virtual lobby open for, for help from student services. And we are experiencing a high volume of daily calls, emails, and Zoom a virtual zoom room through the virtual lobby request so we apologize for any delay that you may all be experiencing but once again uh because it's heavy registration time and you know we're right at peak uh registration has been extended to today for fall our fall semester so if you are waiting for quite some time just know that your call your email your request is very important to us and our staff are working tirelessly to make sure that you are served. So uh, we do have extended hours open to you from 8 to 8, Monday through Thursday, Friday, 8 a.m. to 5, and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1. Be sure to head over to hccs.edu slash virtual lobby. And we're doing our part to assist the community with free drive-through COVID-19 testing. We have two sites available that require no appointments, and those are located at our southeast area at our Felix Fraga campus and our East Side campus. They're operating Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Once again, our Felix Fraga and East Side campus do not require an appointment. Our other HCC locations that do require an appointment, however, are the HCC Northeast campus and HCC South campus. Their hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can call 512-883-2400 to make your appointment. <clears throat> and if you haven't already taken part in the census, be sure to do so because it has been extended to October 31st. And the census 2020 still needs you to participate. And if you haven't, it could impact funding. And we, as a public institution, really would benefit from having your voice be heard. So the US Constitution mandated a once a decade count of everyone living in the country. This is open to residents, non-residents, documented, undocumented, doesn't matter. We need your voice because it, it informs how billions in funding is spent for public services, clinics, schools, HCC. So be sure to participate in the census. Head over to 2020census.gov for more information. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be joined by Min Fem of the Drafting and Design Engineering Technology Program. And it wouldn't be Wednesday without Chief Greg Cunningham of our HCC police. And he's scheduled to make his regular visit. So be sure to join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for tomorrow's Up to the Minute. Once again, don't 
forget to follow us on our social media and YouTube and share this podcast so that we can grow our audience. I am Brittany Pacheco. Thanks for watching up to the minute. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Oh,